Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash malicious compliance. In today's episode, dumb employee is dumb. Well, he did say no matter what it was. Oh, you think I'm your personal travel agent? Okay then. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Dumb employee is dumb. I worked at an office supply store for a while in my late 20s while finishing college. I worked mostly with younger college students and began training other employees and running the front end of the store. Our amazing manager took a better position elsewhere and we were gifted a manager who was absolutely horrible, let's call her Jean. She treated us so poorly that we went from over 20 employees to just 7 in the first couple months of her taking reign. Jean was absolutely horrible but I stood up for myself and the few remaining employees and openly expressed my disdain for her while remaining completely professional on paper. And here come annual evaluations. Jean gives me an absolutely horrible review. Since our raises were performance based I did not get a raise. I refused to sign and contested my evaluation, which really pissed her off. Since we only had seven employees left, we were desperately hiring. Within a week or two she had hired a few people and scheduled me to train them so I did what any rational human about to quit their crappy job for a career would do I formally asked HR for retraining due to my perceived incompetence and made it clear that I was no longer comfortable training new hires. I simultaneously began refusing to do any work outside of my minimal assigned responsibilities and began moving really slowly. I made myself as incompetent as possible refusing to answer customer questions via phone and forwarding all calls to her, paging her for help for stupid things, intentionally screwing up the cash register, and requesting policies for irrelevant operations. I stopped meeting quotas and when coached I would play dumb and pretend like I was trying my hardest. Most importantly, I started correcting customers and contractors who called her Jean and insisted her name was January. When she questioned me I said, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name well, January. It infuriated her. Of course Jean was also pissed she had to train the new employees herself. I filed a formal complaint with HR about my lack of retraining every week until they fired me. I had another job lined up but I filed an unemployment claim anyway just to leave some extra work for her. Petty bonus. I never told her that my mom was the store's biggest buyer at the time and had been in the top three forever. Guess who took her business to Office Max? My very non-confrontational mother actually went into the store to request her account be closed, knowing that contract accounts have to be closed by the store manager. Why are you closing your account? I'm Bree's mom. She got canned about a year later and I'd like to think I was the little match that lit that fire. Well, he did say no matter what it was. I worked as a dispatcher for a small town police department out west. There was always a bit of a struggle with our patrol sergeant, who looked down his nose at dispatch, always trying to micromanage our department and bully our dispatch sergeant. One day, he discovered that dispatchers were handling small routine matters, such as answering questions from the public, and handling other minor issues that didn't require a police response. He was outraged. He stomped around the station for a bit, then issued a memo. It began with a condescending essay about how dispatchers were not qualified to answer questions or handle minor issues, as only fully trained police officers were capable of such weighty matters. He then issued a directive that an officer would be sent on any call received from the public, no matter what it was. Our dispatch sergeant just smiled and told us to follow the directive, that she was sure it wouldn't last long. As luck would have it, I was on duty that very night, and I guess I was living right, as the the call came in. Then another, and another. A rather bright meteor had gone harmlessly over the town at a fairly low altitude. Pretty spectacular, really, but obvious as to what it was. My phone rang off the hook, most just wanting to ask if anyone thought it had fallen to earth near the town. Not really an issue for the town police, but, well, he did say no matter what it was. The radio traffic went along these lines. 
Unit 28, stand by for traffic. 28, 28. 28, this will be an attempt to locate, advise when ready to copy. 28, 28 go. Be, be advised, this will be a greenish glowing object, last seen at an estimated altitude of 3,500 feet, traveling in a northwesterly direction at approximately 1,500 miles per hour. If located, stop and identify occupants. 28, 10 to 9? Patrol sergeant, shouting into Mike from his radio at home, did you get a call on this? Affirmative, this station has received multiple calls, and per your directive, an officer has been dispatched. Sound of a radio being slammed to a desk. The next morning the issue was compounded a bit, as the responding officer also followed his directive and filed an official report, noting that the object had fled our jurisdiction before contact could be made, and recommended the matter be referred to the FBI for further investigation, as he had reason to believe the object had crossed state lines. Our captain in chief were laughing to tears, and our detective volunteered to go assist the FBI investigation, theorizing it had gone to Vegas. A new memo was issued by the captain, stating that dispatchers were to have full discretion in the handling of calls and minor matters for the public. Oh, you think I'm your personal travel agent? Okay, then. So I'm in the military and we have this system that we use called the Defense Travel System or DTS that is used to book our airfare, hotel, rental car, etc. Everyone who travels does their own booking in this system and submits it for approval. My supervisor, who was a brand new 22-year-old second lieutenant didn't want to learn how to use the system and always made me book her trips for her last minute because I was an administrator. Anyways no matter how many times I told her she needed to do it herself and showed her how to use the system, she'd always wait until the last minute to get anything done and book her flights. Because of this I was always having to get on the phone with the commercial travel office to book her flights last minute. Finally I had enough and figured this girl is never going to do this herself and I will always be stuck taking care of it last minute. So I started booking her trips for her in DTS as she had wanted me to do all along. So I did. I made sure her flight left at the earliest possible time and had the longest layovers available, seat was the middle seat in the last row for all her flights, I removed her known traveler number in the system so she wouldn't get pre-check, I booked her hotel at the lowest cost hotel in the system so usually a Motel 6 or Howard Johnson even though Hilton's and Marriott were within the cap, and on occasion I booked her rental car at an off-site location that didn't have a shuttle to it. She'd come back from her trip upset and complaining about how bad it was how bad the hotel was, her seat on the plane and how she wasn't pre-check even though she's military. She never figured it out it was me. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.